Welcome to the Human Performance Podcast. Here we talk about everything to do with human performance and how leaders and organizations can get the best out of themselves and their people. I'm your host, Alex Young. My guest on the podcast this week is Nate Palmer. Nate is a fitness and nutrition expert, coach, speaker, and writer. He believes that being in incredible shape gives a massive advantage in business, focus, and relationships. He also happens to be a dad, husband, and the number one best-selling author of The Million Dollar Body Method and Passport Fitness. Nate helps business owners and entrepreneurs improve their physique, finances, and family time using fitness and nutrition as force multipliers. We have a really fun discussion on nutrition, fitness, mindset, and setting habits and goals when improving human performance. Hey, Nate, how are you doing? Welcome to the podcast. I'm doing awesome, Alex. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to talk today. Absolute pleasure. I'm I'm super excited as well. So I think as most of our listeners know, I'm just a massive sports nerd in every aspect. So uh, love nutrition, love going to the gym, feel that nutrition is not understood by anyone, uh, especially doctors and nurses. And I can say that because I'm a former surgeon uh, in orthopedics, which has a lot of sports injuries. Um, so it, it, it's going to be fantastic, you know, talking through uh, a lot of the things that I know you're you're an expert in, but but before we kind of get there, um, be great to sort of hand over to you just to allow you to to introduce yourself and give a bit of your background to all the listeners. Cool. Yeah. So my name is Nate Palmer. I've been in the like fitness industry basically for the last twelve or thirteen years. Started off as a personal trainer after college when I was like, "What should I do with my life?" And I was like, "I'll just do this until I figure out what I want to be when I grow up." And I just kind of haven't looked back since then. So. I've been I'm doing it a lot of different ways. I've done personal training in a big box gym. I've done personal training in my own small studio. Um, my wife and I moved to South America for a year. So we sold all of our stuff and I started working primarily online with clients at that point. And then ever since then, uh, basically that's been my primary business. Uh, I've written a couple books based off of my experience traveling and, and staying in shape on the road. And uh, another book recently just came out called Million Dollar Body, which is geared it for nutrition for entrepreneurs. Like I think of it as performance nutrition, but basically, rather than helping triathletes be successful, how do we help business owners, entrepreneurs, people who are career minded, just perform at an, like an ultimately high level? Because I think nutrition is just so tied into that and no one realizes it. Yes, yeah, it's, it's awesome. And we were just uh, you know, chatting before we started recording. Like I've, I've picked up both your books. And I think you know, particularly what you're talking about there about you know, busy people. Um, you know, entrepreneurs especially, but but you know, could be anyone in, in any kind of high demand job. Um, and and you know, as you know, my my kind of company Verti is all around human performance and uh, how we do treat our employees like athletes, as you say. Um, so I guess you know, the 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 best place kind of to start here is is probably you know, nutrition. And wh- why do you think people just don't get nutrition? And why do you think people can't stick to diets? Well, I think those are two different, totally different questions. And I I'll I'll throw like, I'll throw celebrities and magazines and kind of just pop culture, nutrition fads under the bus for that first question. I think people don't get it because there's so much conflicting information out there. I was talking to someone the other day and she was like, Oh, I'm doing keto. I'm doing all these things. And then she like scoops out like this ice cream and she's like, well, there's like, it's a keto ice cream. And I was like, there's like 14 grams of carbs on here. It's not keto. And she's like, no, but it's said, and someone told me and they're like, there's just confusion all throughout the thing. Like Gwyneth Paltrow is like my nemesis, her and Tracy Anderson, <laughs> just like, just, I just can't stand their stuff. But like Gwyneth Paltrow is all about like, oh, she wakes up and she has her alkaline water with lemon in it. And I'm like, that's, you're not, even if alkaline water was a thing, you're undoing it with like, and so people follow these celebrities because Gwyneth Paltrow's skinny and hot. And we're like, well, we should, we should be like her, right? Or we watch these Instagram influencers who are like, you know, and I don't think anything against like the tonal or whatever else, those new like digital weight machines, but I guarantee you these guys who are like, Oh, the tonal, they built their, they built their bodies doing it the old school way, eating, like eating the right foods, working out at the gym. They didn't build it on these machines. So when people are shilling away for all these other companies or the total gym or these supplement companies, it's like, you didn't like, you didn't do that with this product. It wasn't thermo heat that got you ripped like that. It was hard work and cardio. And so we, but like, and in, in like in, intrinsically, we know this, we know this is true. We know it's like we're being sold to, but we can't help it. We're suckers for good before and afters, right? 
And so that's why all supplements have like before and afters on. That's why people sell, like sell all their stuff with before and afters. That's why I post before and afters because that above, above anything else is like points people in the direction of like, Hey, you can do it too. You can get these results as well. So I just want to throw, I'm just going to say like, I think there's just too much out there for people to even understand. So until you pick, like you either pick like a guru, you're like, this guy knows I get, he understands what he's talking about. And I'm just going to listen to him. Like, I think that's one really great way of going about it. The second way, do it yourself. And I've spent the last 12 years like researching and reading and stuff like that. So I don't recommend that people just like embark on a 12 year journey to, to understand the basics of nutrition, but there's good information out there too, right? So you've got to find the right person and then follow along with them. That's kind of my, like, that's my favorite tactic. If you're, you're struggling, you don't know what's real. Pick the one person that you know is, is not going to lie to you and just stay with them. In terms of the second question, why are people have a hard time following a diet? It's just like, because I think food is stacked against us there. Food scientists get paid tons of money to make, to like create foods that are hyper palatable, have the correct ratios of sugar, fat, and salt. That like, I mean, think about like a McDonald's French fries. No one is like, mm, I'm going to have one French fry. Mm, mm, mm. That is nice. You know, we're like, ah, 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 we're like trying to see how much we can stuff in our mouth because that's what that food is built for. You know, it's not built for single servings. It's built for like gluttony. Those like McDonald's hamburgers, they're like so soft. You don't have to even chew them. They go down to three bites because we, they want us to buy more hamburgers. So I think that again, like a lot of the stuff, like the information is stacked against us. And then also food choices in the store are stacked against us. So that's, that would be my, my two biggest gripes about that. No, all, all great points. And um, yeah, I mean, for, for anyone listening who just, does not have a clue about, you know, calorie intake or output or, you know, your macros or anything like that. Where, where, where would you even begin to, to sort of understand nutrition? So I feel like, you know, I think that I, I do a good job explaining it, kind of cutting through the BS and the myths. Um, so I'm happy to, happy to be a resource. If you, if you vibe with me, if you're like, that guy sucks, he's got a man bun, then yeah, you probably don't want to talk, want to listen to me. Um, Lane Norton does an amazing job. He's really smart, really good at like cutting through the nonsense. Um, Tom Venuto has an amazing book. If you're more of a reader called burn the fat, feed the muscle, really helpful in just kind of understanding the basics of nutrition. Um, and then there, I mean, there's a couple other influences out there who I think do a great job. Jordan Syatt kind of cuts, cuts through the nonsense as well. So, but I pick, pick one or two of those guys, follow along, see who you vibe with because they're all going to be telling you the truth. And when, when you kind of like start working with people um, in, in terms of like analyzing their, their fitness and their, their nutrition, what, what are some, you know, some common trends that you see and, and what do you sort of tend to fix first? Um, most of my clients are like type A, have already tried a lot of things kind of guys. So most people come into me, they're like, hey, I'm, I want to go plant-based. I heard that's going to be healthiest. I watch c or whatever. And then, or they'll say like, hey, I'm doing keto. I did this thing. And so for me, the first thing we do is we got to talk these people off a ledge because they're like, wait, 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 wait. I heard that keto is the only thing that's going to get me results. And I got to be like, no, man, like it can be good. But also like if you want to ever eat carbs again and have a bagel or a beer with your friends, which it sounds like you do, like you, like that's not a viable option long term. So we have to talk them back into like, okay, it's got to be a little bit less like we don't need to cut out entire macronutrient groups. We don't need to cut out entire food groups. Like there's a, there's a healthier balance here and I'm going to teach you kind of how to do it. The other thing that I think is really important, um, and that's something that's I've learned over, like, because like Alex, I've always thought I was an awesome personal trainer. I like I just objectively, I'm really good at it, and I, I'm really like intentional and stuff like that. And I, so I thought when I moved my business online, I'd be like, oh, I'm going to crush it like that as well. I didn't. I didn't because I love training, and the lifestyle, like empathy, like the habit stuff, that all came a lot tougher for me. So at first, I was like. Like, so you like, you hit me up and you'd be like, Hey, let's, let's work out. I'd be like, here's your workout. Boom. Squats, Bulgarian split squats. Let's go. You know, like, and I would give you these um, like hardcore, like badass workouts that were going to get you results, but I just gave people too much too soon. And then they like, and then there was no real backing that up with habits, lifestyle, nutrition. So I had to like kind of re go back to the drawing board and be like, what is the thing that moves the needle the fastest for people? And this really kind of started with me um, in 2018, a client of mine had reached out and was like, listen, I'm overweight. I'm fat. I, I, I hate it, but I don't have time or energy to lose weight right now. But what I know that is when I get home, I have no energy for my family, for my kids. I lay on the couch and I watch sports center. And then about an hour later, I can like barely get to the dinner table. And he's like, and I hate that. And he's like, I want to be a good, I want to be a, a family man with a business, not a businessman with a family. 
And he's like, help me with my, tell me my nutrition to get more energy. So I kind of went back to this tried and true nutrition plan that I had done myself personally for a long time. I read a couple of articles about in the past and we just kind of tweaked it and played with it for him. And then all of a sudden he was like, bro, I don't know what you did to me. I was having three energy drinks a day. I'm down to one. I'm feeling super good. I'm not, I'm not crashing out. And Oh, by the way, I just dropped 30 pounds. I was like, like we got something here. So my strategy now with people when they first come in is give them these really like very like training wheels. The workouts are short. The nutrition is structured. It's really easy to follow. And some people, some people, it's crazy. They come in, they're like, this is too easy. Like what's next? What do you got for me? And I'm like, let's go. All right. Pump the brakes, pump the brakes. Just finish this out. And I swear you're on the right track. And so if people stay with it, they start to see the framework. They understand like, okay, I see how I'm eating these things. So when I pull the training wheels in month two or so, they go, oh, I get it. I get it. And my favorite thing that people say to me about, my, about the million dollar body method, and I, I hear it all the time. I love it so much is they go, I go, how's your, how's your nutrition plan going? They go, eh, I don't really even think of it as a diet anymore. Just this is kind of just how I eat. I feel pretty good. Yes, it's it's really interesting. I mean, I was uh, I was just speaking to you before we started recording about uh, you know me, I, I when I was you know starting up and, and scaling up our business, I was sort of on a plane and I was kind of working out from from hotel gyms, which which actually I kind of loved because it was quite fun and got over my jet lag and stuff like that, which we can dive into in a second. But like my it was really interesting. So I'd I'd had and used kind of like my my fitness pal and stuff like that to kind of track my. Uh, you know, either my steps, my, my, you know, my gym routines and stuff, but I'd, I'd never really got into like tracking my food just because it was kind of so variable and it was, it was quite a lot of effort to kind of do it. And then during lockdown, I actually ended up, you know, just, just really quite religiously tracking things. Um, just more so that I could actually understand like what my, you know, average kind of calorie intake was um, and, and kind of, subsequently have written a, you know, a couple of blog posts around sort of tiredness and, and energy, which um, I, I know you're really, really big on. Um, and, and like, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, my basic understanding has always been around nutrition is you've got your, your kind of macros of like protein, carbs, sugars, um, and then you've got your calorie intake and your, your sort of resting basal metabolic rate plus whatever you exercise. And so if your, your basic energy output is higher than your energy intake, i.e. you're exercising and, and burning more energy than the food you're taking in, you, you're going to either kind of maintain or, or lose weight. And then it's getting that balance right. Is that kind of like, do you think that's too simplistic? Or, or do you think that there's that, that, that's sort of near, near the mark in terms of how people should look at diet and nutrition? I think that's 99% correct. And I think for the majority of people, so, like most people think, oh, I'm a special case and they're not. It's, it's output versus input, right? And if we, if we're account, like we've, if it's been shown time and time again, that all diets work, keto works, intermittent fasting works, veganism works, everything works for fat loss, provided that calories and proteins are equal with those two things in line, it really doesn't matter how you do it now. Like now when it comes down to like, like, and I think that like, that's one like important aspect of fat loss for sure. But I think when it comes down to performance, I like we could take the exact same macronutrients and we could eat them six meals a day to stoke the metabolic furnace. And I'm putting that in air quotes if you're just listening to this, because that's a little horseshit and everyone knows that, hopefully. But if so, you can do it like that. But I think for to perform at a really, really high level, changing up like the meal frequency, the timing, and the times of day you're having specific like macronutrients can be so clutch for your energy and how you feel on a regular basis that it can lead to being able to maintain that style of, of nutrition much longer term. It just makes it so simple. And it's basically like, you know, like it's like color by number, right? Like, so rather than being like, Hey, here's a blank sheet of paper, like go ahead and like paint your Mona Lisa on here. It's like, no, give me that. Give me that. like, I'm going to put like four here and then like six here. And so we have that, like that, like that directions, the lines to help us out. It makes your life just so much easier. And that's what, how I think of like a framework. Yeah. And, and I guess, you know, for, for people who are, uh, you know, working their jobs and uh, are super busy or who are like, you know, might be traveling and stuff as, as we touched on that, like kind of energy management, especially at the moment, like during lockdown where people are just kind of sat at their desk all the time and, and, you know, like mental health problems are kind of on the rise. W what's your kind of like recommendation to like, you know, the, the average kind of like, I guess, entrepreneur or, you know, someone in a, in a job in, in terms of like how regularly they should be eating, how many meals, what they should be eating? Um, so most of the time I was big into like the 16, eight intermittent fasting. I did that from like 2009 to 2012. I was doing it like personally, I recommended it to clients and stuff. 
And since then, I've been kind of a little bit more down on that. Not like it's bad. You can definitely get results for it if it works for your lifestyle. But what I found was that myself, for my clients, we'd have that bigger meal in the middle of the day. It would kind of slow us down in the afternoon and get less done in the afternoon because you're just kind of tired. So for that reason, I've kind of come back to, I do think breakfast is an important meal. I think it kind of sets the tone for the day in the same way that if you get up 30 minutes late and you're running and you're rushing and you don't get to shower and you get to work a little bit late, it throws off your whole day. Like similarly, grabbing a Pop-Tart or having a bowl of cereal or eating the wrong nutrients in the morning can kind of throw you off your energy and your blood sugar levels for the whole day. So I do believe in having three meals per day um, in a specific way. I believe that snacking is one, of the, is one of the biggest detrimental, like bad habits that someone can adopt. And I think that having like the six meal per day to stoke your metabolic furnace is one of the biggest lies that we've been fed in fitness that has been for like supplement companies and like food companies benefit and completely to humans detriment. So three, three squares, no snacks is kind of my, my personal preference, especially for fat loss, especially for entrepreneurs. No, that's awesome. And, and you know, in, in terms of like kind of uh, people who are, are kind of going to the gym and I, I guess like, you know, a lot of entrepreneurs uh, d- just, you know, by nature are, are going to be kind of conscious of, of their health or, or at least, you know, they should be. So, you know, certainly a lot of my friends who uh, have started kind of companies often, uh, you know, go to the gym reasonably regularly, but, but quite a lot of people kind of struggle to um, yeah, ba- basically kind of like balance I suppose, cutting up in the gym with, with kind of eating properly. Do, do, what are your views on kind of like exercise and diet? Can, can you, you know, can you get in shape if, if you have one or the other, or do you need both to, to really have effect? That's a good question. So I think that like, it really depends on your goal. If your goal is to build muscle. You have to have both. Building muscle is like the hardest, is, is much harder than fat loss for me. Um, I think that to lose weight, you don't have to exercise. All you need to do is control your nutrition. Um, it does make it harder without exercise. I think exercise is a great catalyst and can actually help speed that process up or at least help you look like not just a smaller version of your former self, but actually like someone who's fit and looks good in the tank top, looks good at the beach, you know? And I think that like, number one, like that's the aesthetic that a lot of us are going for. But number two, um, when you when you look good, you feel good. And when you feel good, you have confidence. When you walk into a room as an entrepreneur to give a presentation or to network and you feel good and you know, you look good, there's power that's there. There's a powerful sensation. And if you've never experienced that, like you owe it to yourself to get in the best shape of your life, if only to experience the confidence that comes with it. So from that, like for that, for that regard, like, yes, you can do like, if like, especially like you have a surgery, you get injured, you're in a really busy time period. My guy, I had a son, he's four months old. <clears throat> so I've been in like this, like this kind of this hectic time period of my life. So it's been really important for me to control the nutrition since the training sometimes doesn't happen or doesn't get dialed in as much as I'd like it to. So in a perfect world, let's get them both. But if you are like, if you had to pick one, just make sure you're eating right. Because that's like, that's gonna, you can, you can train hard, but if you're eating garbage every single night, you're gonna, your body and your energy is gonna reflect that. No, that, that's awesome. And, uh, I, I mentioned, uh, again, so sort of just, just previously, I mean, I'm, I'm a big kind of like CrossFit nerd and, and, and interesting, like I had, I guess I hadn't really done much like kind of like hit cardio before kind of lockdown kicked in. And then when all the gyms are closed, um, I was just, you know, hit class, hit class, hit class. And it made me feel really, really good. I mean, wh- where do you think the balance lies in terms of, you know, weights work, uh, things like kind of hit and, and CrossFit and, and then, you know, your, your more usual kind of like cardio, like things like running. This is, a, this is a great question. And I feel like I have some controversial views on this. So please like, don't take, don't take this personally, but basically I feel like the highest, like the number one thing that you could possibly do to change your body and feel a certain kind of ways, resistance training, weight training. Okay. And I think that building muscle sort of like a more of like a bodybuilding like type of program is the best possible thing people can do. And I think when I think of that, I think of getting stronger over time in key lifts. Okay. And I don't teach clients to Olympic lift. I don't teach them clean and jerks or snatches. I'm not having them do like circus acts or anything. I'm not even going to have them do like a lot of stuff with kettlebells right now. It's basically like we pick three, three exercises, one for your like upper pulling, upper pushing, and then lower body. And then let's get brutally strong at those until you plateau. And let's pick three more and go again. That's like, in my mind, that's like one of the the best things you can do, best investments in your future health, your muscle, how you look and feel. Down from that, my next level of like things that are important 
is like low impact cardio, low impact steady state cardio. And for me, that's walking, walking with the weight vest, walking around. It's great because um, exercise training, resistance training, that's a stressor. Cardio, that's a stressor. Hit classes, that's a super stressor. Walking is a recovery mechanism that also doubles as cardio. So you double dip. And so like, if you had to do, if you could only do two things, weight lift, and do and and go on walks walks every day and like if you could do those things like you would have a you'd have a great you'd feel great you'd look great then next down from that like our hit classes are hurt like a high intensity interval training or high intensity resistance training i think both of those have a time and a place but for most people especially busy people stressed out people people with a lot of kids um i don't i don't think hit is is that good of an idea because hit is expensive and also for me what hit does is trains your cardiovascular system burns calories. It doesn't really build muscle. It doesn't really, it doesn't seem to have that, like that upper echelon of like, of, uh, outputs. And it seems like people are attracted to it because it's a, it's easy to run in big groups. So when our, when we had that big advent of group training and then CrossFit had this like dominant spree for the, like, like, you know, from 2009 to 2016, um, everyone got into hit training and hurt training and that sort of thing. And it's great in a group. It makes you feel good. You sweat it out. You get a lot of endorphins, but I don't think it changes your body in an appreciable way. And I do think it's expensive to recover from. It's expensive from a central nervous perspective. It's essential. It's, it's expensive from a, like a, like muscle fibers perspective. So for most of my clients who have minimal amounts to invest like energy recovery, that sort of thing, I will never ask them to do hit training because it's, it's too costly for what we're getting from it. Um, and then below that, I think is cardio cardio also, it also costs. It also is a stressor, but like, you know, you like getting on a bike and going for a, like a 10 mile bike ride, much easier to recover from like, um, than a, than a hit class where you're doing kettlebell swings and Olympic lifts and that box jumps and that sort of thing. So given, given that option, I would probably like kind of rank them like that. Well, and, and I guess, you know, for, for weight training, um, you know, when, when people kind of go to the gym, if they get kind of infrequently often they'll sort of like lift, you know, the same weights or they'll kind of like plateau as their body kind of, you know, gets used to what they're lifting. How, how do you kind of like, when you work with people, get them to sort of build up, you know, the, the rep max and, and really sort of bulk up in, in that sort of bodybuilding formula? So generally how I like to do stuff, is I love to like give people reverse pyramids. So give them like three or four sets where we kind of pyramid down. So it'd be like 12 reps, then 10 reps, then eight reps, then 12 reps. And I try to teach my clients that really what we're doing with those first three, first three, the 12, 12 10, eight, just as an example, is like helping your body adapt understanding and greasing the groove on that exercise, making sure that you're feeling really good. And you understand for that last set, you're 12. Like those are your buy-ins. Like you will, like, this is the, like, you, if you want to see the flop, you've got to pay the price right here. So like when you got, when you like do those, now you go like, let's say if it's like 50, 60, 70, and you go back to the 12 and you're like, let me do 55 for that. Let me do 60 for that. Then that's your max set. That's where we're really trying to build strength build increase endurance. So whether that's like, okay, you did 12 reps of 55. Now you got to do 13 reps, or maybe you go to 60 and try to get another 12. So either way, like, um, I don't, I, I don't like to talk about workouts. I don't like to talk about exercise. I love to talk about training because training is, is indicative of progression and building up over time. And I think that's so, so important. So all in all my programs, I always tell people, Hey, track your weights here. I use an app called train heroic. So it gives people an ability to track their weights over time and it gives them graphs and charts and stuff. It's super rad. So, but I always want to make sure that people understand that like progression is prog uh, is progress. And like, that's, what's going to lead them to long-term gains, not necessarily how sweaty they are, or how tired they are, how much their legs hurt after doing a hundred lunges. Um, and we, yeah, it was a really interesting point you bring up because we, we mentioned kind of, um, or I mentioned my fitness pal, you've now mentioned some tech, uh, you know, since, especially since you've gone kind of virtual over lockdown and things like that, how, how have you seen kind of like data and technology really sort of influence the, you know, how you deliver kind of fitness training to people? Um, I think the biggest thing is kind of like the Fitbits, the wearable tech. And we see a lot of that and I love it. Um, I'm wearing right now a whoop band. Whoop is great because it's a little bit, I feel like it's like one level above like a Fitbit. It doesn't do steps, which I, it bumps me out, but it does recovery. It tells me how I sleep and it tells me my daily strain. So I track my workouts and it's like, okay, your strain is this for the day. Um, and then you you slept really well and you got a, a heart rate variability score of this. So you're really recovered. Go hard today. And then some days I wake up and I'm like, wow, I am tired. And it's like, yo, you, you overdid it. Like you're like, your body needs recovery right now. 
And so if I had like a hard leg day plan or something like that, I'll just push it back a day. So it gives me the ability to kind of check into myself on like a couple deeper levels. So I think the wearable tech has been amazing. Um, I think there's been a couple other things like stuff where you attach it to the bar and like you, it measures bar speed and output and things like that. And I think those are, you know, like kind of 50, 50, some people love them for their, like, cause they're training Olympic lifting. Some people don't even need them at all. Um, and I think the kind of the new thing, like the VR, the VR workouts, um, I've had a chance to do a couple of those. I think those are so fun. I don't think it's a great way to do like, to like absolutely build the most muscle, but if it's, if it's between a VR workout or no workout, I'm going to take the VR workout every time. Sometimes I just do it at the end of my workout because it's just fun to go like battle. You know, I was doing the black box VR through uh, like at my gym is EOS here in Phoenix. So you put it on and like, you know, you like, you shoot fireballs with a chest press and you do lap pull downs, you shoot like ice shards and stuff. So I totally geek out on that sort of stuff. It was really great. And it's, it's also yeah, a couple of my, my good buddies um, uh, run a, a company called FitXR, which does kind of boxing, which is, which is in virtual reality. Okay. And um, a bunch of our employees like absolutely love it, partly because, uh, the, you know, as we've discussed, like the experience kind of gamifies things and makes it fun. Um, I, you know, I, I know you do a lot on kind of like mindset and how people kind of stick with their, their fitness training. Um, how, how do you kind of, I mean, or do you like employ things like gamification or, or ways for people to kind of build habit and like stick with either a diet or, or fitness training? Yeah. And I think that one of the big things is tracking, you know, and like making sure that you, like over time, not only are you seeing measurable progress on the scale through your progress pictures, which I think are very important for people to, to, to check in with, because those are the output, the out, like the outcomes we're looking for. But also like, what are your weights looking like? Like, it's, it's so cool to see someone who's like, I've never lifted weights before, go from 20 to 30 to 40 pounds. And they're like, I'm so strong right now. Or seeing like, you know, I got a 60, 62 year old female client right now who's banging out sets of three pull-ups. And she's like, I never in a million years thought I could do pull-ups. And so it's so fun to see people because then like, because the industry, I think of fitness and especially for women, it's all about reduce yourself. You need to become less. You're overweight, you're too much. You need to drop weight, reduce fat, lose, you know, whatever. And I think that the kind of the idea is make yourself less. But I think that like, but fitness for me is about becoming more, becoming better every day, growing, becoming greater. And I think when people start seeing that, the like, that's when like, you know, regardless of if this is a leaderboard or not, like they can be, can be become addicted to the process. I also in the process right now of doing a leaderboard for like, since, since my main thing, I help people lose fat, uh, like a fat loss leaderboard. I've seen that like over time, how, who's losing the most. And I think that could be, you know, either really great or not great at all. We'll see though. We test, <laughs> we test a lot of stuff. No, that, that's, that's awesome. And, and, you know, j just jump me into kind of fat loss. And again, I'll, I'll kind of, you know, speak from like my own experience. So, um, I think I, you know, I got down over lockdown to kind of like just under, you know, 15%, like 14.5% body fat, something like that. But kind of getting below that was just absolutely impossible uh, for, for whatever reason. I, I was sort of working out. I was, you know, having a high protein based diet. What, what are some of, you know, your tips uh, if you wanted to, to get into like kind of real elite, uh, you know, less than, less than kind of 15% body fat territory? So this is like my favorite conversation to have. Like, I love working with people who are at 15 and want to get to 10. Like, that's like, that's like something that I, I can do help you with really, really well. If you're trying to go from like eight to five, and I'm not really like a, I'm not really like a helping you step on stage kind of coach. And if you're trying to lose like, you know, like 40 kilos plus, like I'm not really like that kind of coach either, but right here, like this is, this is, this is where I think there's a lot of stuff that you can do. That's a ton of fun. Um, so what we would do is we'd focus a lot on pre and post workout nutrition, making sure that your carbohydrates are coming in that window. So your body can effectively utilize the glycogen to repair, rebuild and recover those, that, the muscles you're training. The, um, during your workouts, you know, keeping the goal, the goal and focusing on progression over time, not really stressing about doing high intensity interval training or having low rest periods during your, during your weight training sessions. And then at the end of your workouts, Alex, and this is like, this is like the secret weapon for, for, especially for guys like us is put five or 10 minutes on a timer at the end of each workout and bust your ass on an assault bike, on a rowing machine, on like, I don't know if you have those wave, those wave, uh, treadmills where yep. you like, it's like self-powered something like that or hill sprints. Hill sprints is another one that I think is just magic for fat loss. 
So what I like to do is I kind of do a re- reverse Tabata. Tabata, I think people are like, I'm doing a Russian twist Tabata. No, you're not. Tabata is like 110% of your, of your VO2 max done for te- like 20 seconds on with a 10 second break. It's designed to completely physically and like emotionally annihilate you. So I like to do a reverse because I think like, I think having a one to two or one to three work to rest period is going to allow you to recover enough to actually burn out that glycogen and start seeing some really good results physically. Like you'll start seeing like the abs coming in, the, like the, like the uh, obliques and everything. So getting on an assault bike, I'll do like a minute warm up and then 10 seconds, just hard as you can on that. Or like, you know, same thing on the row or same thing on the, on the little treadmill, hard as you can. Then 20 seconds recovery pace, slow, slow and easy. Then 10 seconds again, go again. So doing that for about five minutes at the end of every workout or doing it for 10 minutes with 20 seconds on 40 seconds off. Um, I think can be like the, just like, just make a difference where you start seeing your body fat just drop. So that plus like the, the, having like the, the right breakfast, the right pre pre post work on nutrition, I think like that can make a huge difference. And if you, if you want to talk about a few more tips, there, happy to. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, in, in terms of, cause, cause I guess I'm, you know, thinking back to like kind of either entrepreneurs or people, people kind of in work, um, where, you know, they might catch like 45 minutes, maybe an hour at best to, to kind of hit the gym between meetings or over lunch or something like that. What, uh, you know, what sort of nutrition should they be hitting in terms of like carbs and stuff around that workout to kind of maximize it and give them energy when they get back in, in the afternoon? Yeah. Good question. So I think uh, there's like, there's a little bit of like, of a, like it, it depends answer here. Um, and I think the, the, the thing it really depends on is your waist to height ratio. Waist to height ratio is I think more important than your BMI. It's more important than your weight, your relationship with gravity. And I think it tells us something really, really important. It's when you measure your waist and you divide it by your height, and if that number, you can do it in you know, centimeters or inches or whatever, it would do the same thing. If that number is 0.46 or higher, then you are, you are in what's a call, is called a state of insulin resistance. So what we need to be doing right there is just helping your body re-understand how to utilize carbohydrates, how to use insulin, how to, st- how to stop storing your carbohydrates as fat. Okay. And so most people need a little bit more structure around their nutrition. That's like high protein, high fat in the morning, light lunches, and then all your carbohydrates at dinner or at least post-workout. And I think if you're, if you're in that zone 0.5 or above of the waist height ratio, um, don't like not stressing about the pre and post-workout nutrition at that point, because you probably have, you got, you got like weight to lose. You don't have like body fat percentage to lose. Does that make sense? Yeah, got it. Got it completely. I, I, I guess, you know, you, you bring up a good point, which is, um, you know, your, your kind of sugars and, uh, and your, your carbs and, and particularly like, you know, I, I think what, what we've seen sort of during lockdown is, you know, people have put on weight people, particularly when they're kind of, you know, 40 plus or, or in, in later life, they're kind of at high risk of picking up, you know, type two diabetes, which, um, has got a whole host of, um, you know, related comorbidities and medical conditions related to it from kind of like stroke to heart attack and stuff like that. Um, wh- how do you think people should sort of manage their, you know, their blood sugars and things like that? What, what's your sort of advice around that? Okay. This is, this is a great question because I do think there's like, there's, there's a couple phases here. And like the first phase is all about getting yourself to that, like that healthy waist height ratio. And that's kind of what we're talking about here. Well, that second phase is once you're there, like someone like someone like you, someone like me, where it's like, okay, I want to dial that in more. Now we tighten up the screws on the pre and post workout nutrition. We dial these things in more. We get like, we, we do the fun stuff here. It's just like the, it's just a, like the, the basics. And so many people think they're either, they're intermediate or advanced when they're just, when they're beginners and they need to be focused on this. Um, so for, for people like that, when they wake up and they grab that granola cereal pop tart on the way out the, out the door, what they're doing is you're spiking your blood sugar and so what happens is if you're not in a place where you're insulin sensitive, you're insulin resistant. And again, to find out if you are or not, you don't have to go to the doctor. You just have to do a measurement of your waist at your belly button, divide that by your height, in the same centimeters or inches. And if you're 0.46 or above, you're insulin resistant. Okay. You need to get that down. So if you are that, what you need to be doing is in the morning, having high protein and high fat. What that's going to do is rather than spiking up your, your blood sugar, it's going to provide you this nice, slow, like time release. Of, of blood sugar and of energy. So that way, because what happens is if you spike that up in the morning, it's going to drop back down. So 1030, you're like, ah, I could really go for a donut or something like that. And you start getting these hunger pangs, 1030, you know, after lunch, 230, you start getting a little bit tired. And that's how you know you have a disordered relationship with insulin. 
So in, in order to make sure that you have the, like the right energy all day, you don't get those cravings so you can make it to lunch without having snacks, high protein, high fat in the morning. For lunch, for entrepreneurs, people who are busy, busy professionals who need to do work in the afternoon, who are not, don't have the luxury of just sitting around twiddling their thumbs, having a light lunch, super important. Again, we don't want to spike your blood sugar and drop it back down because if you're insulin resistant, you spike your blood sugar. Like, so your blood sugar goes up, your insulin will either go up like, and won't, won't meet it or be too much. So it'll drop back down. Your body still has insulin in it. And it's like, well, what do we do with all this? So it sends a signal to your brain. It goes, Hey, let's get some more blood sugar. So instead of eating like eight blueberries, which would bring us to here, we have that donut. And now we're up here again. And the insulin comes up and then comes back down. And so all day long, we're out of, out of alignment, out of whack. Um, so having that high protein, high fat meal in the morning, having the, a high protein, high vegetable lunch um, in the afternoon, those things are going to keep your blood sugar stable and steady. And then at night, we have a lot of carbohydrates, spike that blood sugar up, put you in a place where you're going into that rest and digest that parasympathetic nervous system dominance that like, you know, just kind of like chilled out post Thanksgiving, you know, watching the Detroit lions lose at football type of type of situation, you know, and that's when we like, we're signaling to our body, Hey, it's rest time. We're shifting down and we're shifting into like tiredness, rest recovery, which is perfect because generally people go to bed after dinner. So basically what we want to do is we want to work with your body's natural hormone and like circadian rhythms. Then we want to work with your, like your, your, uh, your career and your entrepreneurial rhythms. Because like, if you, you know, and like, this doesn't apply if you're working like third shift, it has, it has to be changed up a little bit and be a little bit different. So want to work with your body, want to work with your chosen, your, like your chosen things, like things that are important. I think for a lot of us, fitness is not like our end all be all. Like Alex, you and I love this stuff. We like nerding out on it. We love working out. That's not everybody. Most people are like, yo, I just want to do this so I can make more money. I want to do this so I have a better relationship with my family. I want to do this so I can find like that perfect partner. And for those people, the fitness isn't the end, end goal. The fitness is just a medium or like a mechanism to get there. So having, that, having it just be so, so, so easy is really important. Yeah, I think, I think that, that habit change piece where it's, it's really accessible for people um, and, and they kind of understand what they can do and understand that they can do it is, is really, really important. And I think um, I completely agree with you. I think like a lot of social media is really bad for, for kind of nutrition and studying people's expectations and, and stuff like that. But, but there are some elements, like you mentioned, the kind of before and after pictures where it kind of gives people like an element of, well, if someone else has done it, like I, I can do it. Um, assuming the before and afters aren't completely photoshopped that is um so you know I did one the other day of myself as a, like a nine month old and then myself today and i was like look at that I gained 150 pounds of muscle. <laughs> you can do yeah. it too is <laughs> is awesome I, I love looking at fake before and afters where there's like different tattoos amazing um so uh, you know in again going back to kind of like busy professionals um you know one of the big things especially as as kind of like in-person meetings are becoming a thing again and for people like sales professionals or, or anyone who has to kind of you know socialize and stuff grabbing a, a beer or you know a glass of wine or something at the end of the day can either be relaxing or it's like a social occasion what what do you do and, and say to clients who you know have to do that in in you know their mindset how, how do you kind of deal with alcohol this is, a, this is a great question. This is, this, this is what the people got to know. So alcohol, like in a, in a fat loss diet is really detrimental. Like you can have alcohol once a week, you can have alcohol two or three times per week, but like the more you have it, the more it slows down your results. So as long as you're okay with that and you can, and you understand what that cost is totally fine. Live your life. And I'm not gonna tell you don't, don't drink, you know, like we've been locked down for like for two years. Let's, let's have a beer here. You know what I mean? But what people got to have to realize is that alcohol is a poison, a delicious, karaoke enhancing poison, but a poison nonetheless. So in, in order for your, like, so what happens is like, I'm drinking this beer and, and my body is like throwing, like, like hitting the alarm button, right? It's like, everyone shut it down. So it's like, it shuts down all your other metabolic processes, going and pulling fat and using that for fuel, like storing things. Like it just shuts all that stuff down in because it's like, let's get the, the poison out of your body. I'm gonna save your life. I love you. Like that's what your body's doing to you as you're drinking. So that taco you're having, like the carbs in, the, in your vodka cranberry, whatever else that you're like, the other food, carbs, calories you're having, that stuff, your body's like, just store it, just put it anywhere. And so it's like, it just packs it into your stomach and your thighs and your hips. And so like, while you're drinking, 
all the food, all the carbohydrates, all the sugars that you're, you're eating, that gets stored as fat because your body can't process those out as well as process out the alcohol. So if we want to drink without gaining fat, we have to do it in a specific way. What we want to do is we want to make sure that before we drink, like two hours optimal, one hour okay, having a protein and a fat meal, low carbs. Um, if, and if you want to, you can call this just a drinking base. You know, you're welcome. Um, and then after that, we're going to wait two hours or an hour, hour like minimum. And then we can have some, have some alcohol. Okay. That's fine. Drink, have a couple of drinks. Better to stick with stuff that doesn't have any, like a, doesn't have any mixers with it or, you know, a diet Coke or a diet cranberry rather than like the full sugar versions. Totally fine. Um, wine and beer are both kind of detrimental. Wine, the benefits of wine has been completely overstated by people who like to drink wine. Um, and then if you're going to have some food after that, you're going to stumble down and get some greasy food. Cause you're like, you know, you've had five beers, um, 10 beers. I don't know. No, no, no judgment. So what you want to do is you want to wait another hour at two hours if you can, but before you have that food, let your body process out the alcohol. So it doesn't take the food you just ate. And again, you just go into storage. So generally splitting your don't eat and drink at the same time is an easy rule to follow. If you're like at a client dinner and they're pouring up the wine and you're like, I'm eating and drinking at the same time. Oh no, what should I do? Just eliminate the carbs for that, for that meal. So have your, have your steak, your protein, have your vegetables, have your alcohol, but no carbs. So no rice, no potatoes, no desserts, anything like that. And then as a rule, don't have something sweet and have alcohol in the same meal. You're an adult. Pick one. Drink or have your cake, but don't have both. That's stupid. <laughs> good, good, good advice. And I think, you know, a lot of the people, a lot of, um, you know, our, our listeners either are in the kind of the medical profession or, you know, they, they do kind of a bunch of traveling when, um, you know, airports and, and planes and stuff actually function and work. Um, what's, what's your advice to people like who have to do like night shifts or, you know, their body clock. And as you mentioned, they're kind of like circadian rhythm, their natural kind of like biological processes are, are just messed up on like a weekly or even daily basis in some, in some cases. Um, so I think it's kind of like for that, for me is very similar to like how I treat jet lag. Um, as like, cause uh, for jet lag, for me, what, what's happening is like, if I'm flying to Europe or Hawaii or somewhere like a big, like a two time zones away, at least, um, as soon as I get on the plane, I adopt the time zone of the place I'm in. So if I'm flying to the UK and it's nighttime over there, I'm gonna try to get a nap on the plane. I'm gonna try to sleep. Um, if I'm flying, if I'm, if it's nighttime for me and it's like, it's daytime over there, I'm gonna try to stay up. I'm trying to adopt that time frame right off the bat. Um, so same thing when like, when you are like, when you're working that shift and I'm, I'm like, honestly, I'm probably not even the best person to talk to about this because I've never been a third shift worker. So I don't have like a ton of experience here, but trying to, trying to just get in that zone and then like just supplementing with little naps as needed to, to make sure that you are, you know, physically, mentally, uh, available. And then I think also having, having your biggest meal of the day before you need your biggest sleep. So trying to eat light all the rest of the time because the the heavier you eat, the more tired you get. If you want to do more, eat less. So if you're gonna if you're going to be like you're like okay, I need to, I know I need to sleep. You know it's it's five in the morning. I've got to, I got all day to sleep. Have a big meal, high carbohydrates at that point because that's going to help shift your body into its natural rhythm of 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 rest and digest, which is going to help facilitate a deeper sleep. Okay, and then also for, uh, pre like pre your longest sleep of the day. Um, carbohydrates and proteins don't have fats in there as well because it's getting dark in here because if the if you're having carbohydrates and fats at the exact same time there's a there's sometimes people report like feeling really heavy having weird dreams not sleeping super well but carbohydrates are gonna be this really clean burning like energy where you're gonna burn through really quickly be tired and then shift into that rest and digest mode and, and just before we sort of start to wrap things up i mean um I think like, you know, stick, sticking to all of these things is, and, and habit formation, as we've mentioned, is, is often the, you know, the really challenging thing for people. And, and my, my whole approach, and I've, I've been, you know, getting to gym exercising and, and watching roughly my kind of like nutrition for like a, a number of years, basically. And it's sort of part of my, my lifestyle, basically. And, and I mean, if I eat something unhealthy now, like a burger, I like feel literally unwell because I'm so dialed into eating like broccoli and chicken and stuff. Right. But, you know, for, for, for um, pe people who are, are kind of like by themselves and, and they're struggling to stick with things. Um, I know you've got a uh, sort of a Facebook um, group and community. H how important is that element of like community and having someone else to kind of, you know, have your back if you're like slipping or, or motivate you on a day where you just feel like super tired? 
oh my gosh, like it, it can be like night and day. Um, I think like, yeah, the, I have the Facebook community. So if you guys want to be a part of that, or you want to be a join in a group of high performers who are all just really positive, uplifting. Um, what's really cool about this group, Alex, is that there are people in the group who I've never met, who I've spoken to once or twice, who are getting crazy results. We're not, they're not even like, they're not even paying me for, for coaching or anything like that. But just as a part of being a part of the group. And then like generally I try to get on a call with each of the members just to see where they're at, what they need help with. Um, and I'll point them in the right direction. So like we had one person, I was like, Hey, you need to do this. You need to change your, your, your lunchtime to this. And she's like, hit me up later. She's like, man, I'm down 14% of my body weight. Wow. She won the biggest loser competition. Yeah. And I was like, great, go ahead. Like, that's what I want is people, everyone around me, Alex, is what like, my goal in life, what like, my calling is, is I want everyone I'm connected to, to make more money and be more healthy, be more fit. I think those two things are just really important to me. And I think I want to see people win. So having that, like having that additional accountability, I feel like it's like that, that coaching accountability, that kind of that vertical accountability, but then accountability from our peers, that lateral accountability is really important because then if I'm having a bad day, Alex, I'll go and I'll say like, Hey guys, I'm going to the gym today. I'm doing this thing. And I put it out there and I say, it's going to happen. And then I have to do it because I set it in front of a bunch of people who all are going to hold me accountable to that. So I think it's, I think it's incredibly powerful. Um, and for like, like for my private clients, they get text messages from me like four or five, six times a week where I'm sending them out, asking them questions, seeing where they're at, like just checking in and having that, like that availability and accountability where it's like, Hey, like I'm, I am looking out for you. Where are you at? What do you need right now? Um, like on those days when you're like, ah, I'm a little sore. I'm a little tired. I got stuff going on. Those are those days when like, just like having just a little nudge is what's going to push you in that right direction. Um, Benjamin Hardy wrote a book called willpower doesn't work. I don't know if you've heard of him, ever heard of him, but it's an amazing book. F fantastic. And what he talks about in there is a concert pianist who does two things to be successful. Number one, he writes music. He is unable to play. He writes music outside of his comfort zone, outside of his abilities. And he practices it and practices it, and practices it until he can play it. So he puts the, he starts with the end in mind, like starts with that goal and then builds up to it from there. The second thing is he says like, he goes, Hey guys, new album coming out July next year. He doesn't have any music written. He doesn't have the album written. He doesn't have anything. He's like, but he announces it to create that lateral accountability. And then he goes and he books time. He books time to record. So he's already, he's already announced it. He's already created accountability, the, like the motivation. And then he's put money down and says, this is going to happen. This is happening right now. So those two things are so powerful for getting the results that he's looking for because you might not show up for yourself. Some days you're like, no, I don't, I'm not going to do it. I'm tired or whatever else, but you'll show up for me. You'll show up for your parents. You'll show up for your significant other. You'll show up for other people. Sometimes we'll just do more for others than we ever do for ourselves. So having that availability of, of other people, a community of people that are just invested in your success and want to see you win, like you can't put a price tag on that. But if we did, it'd be free because it's just free to join. So if you want to jump into the group, n8trainingsystems.com slash group will get you there. No, that, that's awesome. And, um, you know, I think one, one question I'd love to ask is, uh, you know, you, you'd obviously work with, as we mentioned a bunch of times, kind of entrepreneurs and, and successful people. What, what's been your kind of like favorite story where you've kind of, you know, coached someone and, you know, what you've been doing in fitness or nutritional mindset has really kind of impacted something outside of that, whether it's like a relationship, whether it's, you know, wealth and, and, uh, you know, their job, have you got any kind of really cool examples? Yeah. So, um, one, one of my clients came to me and he was outside he was outside just like drinking a glass of wine, reading a book and his window was open. Um, and he had heard his wife talking to her friend on the phone and she had said something to the extent of, yeah, like so-and-so, whatever his name is, um, like, it, like it's been fine with him recently, but I'm just not attracted to him anymore. And she heard him, he heard her say this on the phone and he was like, Oh, like, like that's like, what a gut punched me. Like she didn't know she, he didn't, she didn't know that he heard. She didn't know that he, like, so to catch that in the moment, like, Ooh, like, like hurt bad. Right. And so he was like, you know what? Like I have let myself go. I do have a dad bod. I don't like, like my wife is amazing. And I like, I haven't been keeping up with myself because I've just been, we've been married and we have two kids and whatever else. So he came to me and he's like, like, what do I have to do? Because like, I don't want to, I don't want to ever hear that again. I don't want her to ever have to feel like that again. So we started working on his fitness and nutrition. He doesn't like working out. He doesn't care about it. It doesn't, it's not important to him. He's running a, he's running a, like a multimillion dollar real estate business. 
So like, it's not on his radar to like go bench press a PR. He doesn't care. You know, like he's, he's really successful in all these other metrics, drives a nice car, has nice clothes, all these things. <clears throat> but what he found is that like with his health wasn't in line, with his fitness wasn't in line, like those other things weren't as important. So we just started working on a performance-based nutrition plan. Like I wasn't even having him do much. Like he was walking 30 minutes a day. Like that was what we did to start. And so as he got more results and started seeing things get dialed in, he literally came to me and he goes, listen, I just had my best month I've ever had financially. And he's like, and I think it's because I'm thinking clearer. My focus is there. My, like I'm on all day long and I feel so good. So we just gradually kind of just ratcheted up his workouts, a little bit of TRX here. Then we started going to the gym a little bit more. And so now he's like enjoying it, but financially and relationally, he says, those have been the biggest wins, not necessarily how sweet his biceps are. And that's, that's fantastic. I want people to win in those arenas because for most of us, biceps are not important. How much you bench press? Not important. How much money I make, how my relationship with my wife, very important. Very important. So like, I want to give people the ability to focus on those important things because at the end of the day, if you're fit, when it's great about that, it saves time. Like that's it. It saves you a ton of time. And it takes this mental track that we deal with. You're not good enough. You're too fat. You're too this. You're too skinny. You never, you'll never be strong. You'll never do that. It takes that and it just gets rid of it. So now you, ta- like, you take this thing that's just been occupying space in your brain, living in the rent free, and you just take it away. And now you've got more focus, more ability, more time to spend with the things that actually resonate and matter for you that's priceless that's awesome and, and man I, I could speak to you about fitness nutrition and, and everything else all day but uh, as as we kind of start to close things out uh, one question I, i'm really interested to, to hear your answer on is uh who is your human performance hero who's kind of inspired you on everything you've done um I'll, I'll, i'm gonna throw out two right now um number one for me is is my dude nick santanastasso i don't know if you've heard of him He's uh, he was born with no legs and one arm and he has one finger on that arm. And he has an amazing attitude. You got to follow him on, you got to follow him on Instagram. This dude has a great Instagram. He's so, he's so cool. Um, and he just has this like undefeatable attitude, confidence through the roof. And like for someone who's been dealt kind of a crummy hand, he's not let that impact him or his, like what he's capable of um, or like his abilities in any way. He still drives, he still drives all the time. He's got a, like, he's working out, he's working out with the rock. Like, He's, he's doing the most. And it's so inspiring to see because on those days when I'm like, I don't want to train legs. I'm like, bitch, don't you think he wants to train legs? Like, don't you think that like, if he, like, if he could, that like, that would be the number one thing he would want to do. I go, yeah. And I, then I just drag myself in there and I go, cause it's, cause like, we are so, we're so spoiled with what, like, you know, with what we have, like, you don't realize how much you enjoy breathing through both nostrils until that one nostril is plugged and you can't do it. Right. And you're like, Oh man, remember that? That was the best. So Nick Santanastasso is awesome. Follow him on Instagram. And then also like also The Rock. I love The Rock because he is, he just seems like this cool down to earth guy. Just doesn't take himself too seriously for being like one of the number one Instagram influencers like of all time. But also he's a guy who promotes like consistency, grit, determination, and building muscle, which I think is a lot of people are like, oh, I don't want to get too big right now. Like bitch is not happening for you. So I think that The Rock is, The Rock is awesome. Awesome, awesome picks. Uh, I fully support both of those. Uh, I literally saw a, an Instagram post of The Rock where he was talking about why even if you just do like a little bit of gym work on a Sunday, you're probably beating like 90% of everybody else who's, who's not working. And that that's how you outwork people. It's just a little bit when everyone else is asleep or everyone else is like chilling out and watching Netflix, get get in the gym, do it. And, and that kind of consistency will will really put you ahead. Totally. Awesome, man. Well, it's, it's been an absolute pleasure. Um, you know, I'm sure people are, are going to be fired up after listening and, and watching this. Um, if they are, where can they go to find out a little bit more about you? So like I said, that group is probably the best place. If you, if you need something or if you wanted my guide to alcohol, which I've written out, it's like a PDF. So you can check that out. So just go to the group and the number eight training systems.com slash group will get you there. And then just the questions where you said, like, where did you hear about us? Just say, give me that alcohol guide and I'll, I'll, know, I'll know to send it to you. Um, and then you can find me on Instagram, NA Training, Twitter, the same thing, um, Facebook, MySpace, <laughs> I don't, Bebo. <laughs> yeah, I'm on it. I'll just look around. And then my website, n 8 So.
Awesome. And then you can find me on Amazon. Find me uh, buy, grab the book if you if you want a little bit more. Oh, yeah, that book is great. I picked it up myself as we, as we mentioned earlier. It's awesome. Really, really good. Really good. And it's, it's I really uh, appreciate that. It's, it's very different because it's um it's the, the the previous one as well, which is aimed at kind of like entrepreneurs and people who are kind of like busy, and it's got that focus on the whole kind of like health, wealth, love, happiness, spin of fitness, which I, as many people know, I'm a massive, massive fan of. So yeah, awesome, awesome work. And, um, it's been and you get to read the story about me getting beat up by a meth head. So like, that's a win-win. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Man. Well, um, thanks so much for coming on today and, uh, you know, just keep, keep doing all the good stuff you're doing. Thanks brother. I really appreciate it. It was a lot of fun talking to you, Alex.